My passion for acting, I guess, started when I was pretty young, but my father didn't uh, support it, and I had to agree because I didn't know anything about it either. So I actually went to university for commerce, but I was doing, uh, I was on the national team of a sport called pentathlon, which has these old sports. It's a uh, you know running, swimming, shooting, horseback riding, and fencing. So there's no funding for Canadian athletes, so I got into a lot of debt. I was working a bartending job while you going to school. Up, really? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, joined a little modeling yeah. talent agency to try to get some you know money coming in on the side. And when you know it, the first audition that came up was for a children's piece, period piece movie playing young Ivanhoe. And I got the part. And from there, just uh, 17, 18 years ago, and uh, yeah, hasn't stopped. Wow. <laughs> Uh, myself, uh, I don't know. I'm from Wales, so we're, you know, everyone's into like singing, dancing, and drinking, and it's pretty much what you do as an actor by and large. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I've always been into it. Um, I was always into Shakespeare. My grandfather was a compere, singer, uh, raconteur, and uh, I lived with him most of the time. So uh, I used to go out to pubs and clubs with him from the age of five. And then thought, why not try and make a career out of this? <laughs> <laughs> and they're telling stories, pretty much. Um, and that's what I did. Um, I went to drama school in London, uh, great drama school, met some great people, worked in great jobs in London, and then decided to come to Canada. He fell in love. He fell in love. And then I fell out of love. And then I fell back in love. And they were both Canadian. And they were both Canadian. And now I'm here and getting to work with talented people like Chris Holden Green. And we're so honored to have him. Yes. We do wonderful well projects like Captain right. Canuck. Well, Captain Tucker was a, a comic book that was started in 1972, I believe, was the first episode of the first um, incarnation. Yes, uh, I think it did 12 or 15. Daddy, how many episodes? How many? Uh, not episodes. Oh my God, how many uh, comic books did uh, Captain Canuck originally? Fifteen in total. Fifteen in total. Fifteen in total. Yeah. Um, but just out of 15 books, it, uh, it garnered a lot of attention, and it's still it's still quite prevalent in the Canadian comic book world. So we're reinvite we're reinventing it, bringing it back with uh, a web series, potentially followed by a comic book, film series, the whole deal. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Basically, trying to establish a you know Canadian icon in the sort of animation world, really, and superhero world. Yeah, I mean. There is Guardian, but you know, that's what it is. But I'm trying to bring this on, and I fortunately get to play Mr. Gold, the arch villain. So, the arch nemesis in the you know, beginning. I'll, I'll bring a little bit of, uh, you know, Dr. Roberts to that one as well. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Harrowing. <laughs> For me, I think it's one of the greatest things because, I mean, as an actor, as a theatre actor, because I, I was a theatre actor one time, and still am sometimes, um, is that you get an instantaneous response for, for what the audience, it's, it's, you can't, it's intangible in some ways, but you feel it. But Twitter is the closest, I think, you get to it as a, uh, as a TV and film actor. You can actually see how people are responding to the scenes as they're being shown live, which I sometimes kind of find interesting. I mean, I'm not obsessive about it, I don't watch it all the time, but occasionally if I want to know something about whether a scene worked or if they thought it would be funny, you can go into those Twitter feeds and it's all there, yeah. live response, and that's it's quite unique, really. And we've started interacting with our through Twitter with the people as they watch it, and that's been a fun experience too. You know, asking what happened behind the scenes while we were shooting that scene, because a lot of times we can't talk about what we've done until the audience sees it. So that immediate response is, uh, <laughs> is enjoyable. Don't give up unless you're totally broke and always have something to fall back on maybe. You know, they say never give an artist something to fall back on. I, I don't believe in that at all. 
Yeah. If it's not working, make sure you got something else in your back pocket. Be yeah. smart. Okay. Uh, go to a good drama school, in my opinion. Didn't work. Yeah, Chris is obviously the exception. Um, evolve, continue to evolve. And hang in there because you never know when your time's coming. Sometimes, you know, I was just with a friend of mine who, he's just coming into his own as an actor and he's incredibly castable and now he's 40, but maybe in his 30s he didn't get the roles he wanted. Sometimes hanging in there helps. You never know when it's coming. They say perseverance makes a career. And they say after being in, after, they say it makes ten, takes 10 years for an actor's career to sort of yeah, easily gestate. And uh, I remember actually after 10 years, I, I literally kind of turned to myself, I'm like, holy crap, I'm actually working. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> give yourself 10 years. If it doesn't work in 10 years, yeah. slit your wrists. <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, so don't slit your wrist. That <laughs> <laughs> was a joke, I'm British. <laughs>